Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So we're going to do something a bit different this week. We've actually got a glitch we need to solve and I'm going to take you through the process that led me to the solution. Um, so first of all, I'm going to give a shout out to the comment that um, found the glitch. So thank you Serenity D'Angelo. There's a bug where if I press the same card twice while it's face up, the game freezes. Is there a way I can notify the user or a way to fix this? Thanks very much for pointing this out. Um, let's test that glitch, shall we? So this is all fine when we press single click, but what happens if we double click? One, two, the whole thing freezes. And look, player control is frozen at no. So we can't click on anything else in the game. So this is a problem. Um, so ideally, we want to find an elegant solution to this problem. We want to find something that we did wrong in the code that we can fix that makes it um, work better. And spoiler alert, I never find an elegant solution. I have a really hacky solution for you today. But I think this is an important enough glitch that doing a hacky workaround, so an, an elegant or clumsy workaround, uh, to make it work is better than nothing and sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. So first of all, um, I thought that the problem might be to do with um, when this sprite clicked. Um, so we've got our in our card sprite the code that um, tells um, the card if it does anything is up here. Uh, when this sprite clicked, if the costume number equals one then um, then ask another question, which is if the player control equals yes, then do this stuff. So first I thought, oh, maybe we can fix the problem if I first ask if player control equals yes, because the first thing that we do is set player control to no. So if the code's working as intended, the moment we click on one of these cards, player control switches to no, which means we shouldn't be able to click on any others, right? The problem is, it doesn't work. So even when I even when I changed it there, um, for for whatever reason, and I can't see why, we're still able to interrupt the code by clicking on it, even though the player control is set to no. So our clicking should do nothing. Not sure why. Um, I even tried getting out an and operator. and putting our, the if all on the same um, line. So we've got if player control equals yes and costume number equals one. I thought maybe it's getting stuck somewhere in between the two ifs. But no, it still doesn't work. So if you can think of a better, more elegant solution than the one I'm about to show you, I would love that leave it in the comments um, and that would be great because um, we're all learning together. Uh, but otherwise, I'm gonna show you my terrible, clumsy, but workable solution. Right, you ready? So I figured what we could do is when we click on this sprite, we could make some other sprite appear on top of it so that you can't click on it again. Um, and then I thought, well, why not make that sprite cover the entire screen and see if it's still and see if that fixes the problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to events, the yellow category, make sure that you're in your card code, your card sprite, looking at the code underneath when this sprite clicked. And we're going to make a broadcast. So go to yellow, the yellow category events and look for broadcast. Then click that white triangle, click on new message. Now you can name this um, double click glitch protector maybe. Maybe that's too long. It's good that, make sure that your, your, your broadcasts always have names where you know what the broadcast does. It needs to be very obvious what it does. So we could call it double click glitch protector. I'm just going to call it glitch protector, I think. 
Um, you can call it, as long as you know what the broadcast is, you can call it what you want, but always call it um, something that makes sense. Um, and ideally, something... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Something uh, obvious. So, what you need to do then is get out Broadcast Glitch Protector and put that right underneath our set player control to no. We could even put it above. It shouldn't matter too much, but it needs to be either right above or right below set player control to no. I'm gonna go with right below for now. Um, so then what we're going to do is we're gonna have a sprite cover the screen once it receives this broadcast glitch protector. So we're going to go to the bottom right corner of the screen, hover over the little cat face here, move up and click on paint. And we're just gonna paint, we're just gonna make a, a rectangle. I'm gonna make it red. Now this is gonna be in, eventually we're gonna make this invisible. But for now I'm just gonna make it red so it's obvious and make sure it covers the entire screen. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna rename this sprite as glitch protector. Um, I'm very hopeful that we don't have to make any more glitch protection type sprites, otherwise this could get confusing. But anyway, we'll see. Um, then we're going to get out a when I receive. So when I receive glitch protector, we're going to go to looks and we're going to look for go to front layer near the bottom. And we're going to go to, we're going to get out a show Put that underneath go to front layer. Now the reason it goes to the front layer is it needs to make sure that it covers all of the cards. And we're going to get out set ghost. Um, actually, we won't do that just yet. So we're going to go to events. Um, or sort of, sorry, we're going to go to control, the orange category. I'm going to drag out wait one second just to make sure. I'm going to ch click on this one and change it to 0 0.2. And then we're going to get a wait until. So drag out wait until. So we're going to make this red um, sprite appear in the middle of the screen, prevent you from clicking on any of the cards. And it will go away once the player has control back. Okay. So we need to go to operators, the green category, and look for an equals operator. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight from the top. It's this one here with the equals sign in it. We're gonna to go to variables, and we're gonna drag out player control into that first socket of our equals operator. Then we're gonna click on that 50 and change it to yes. So it's going to appear in the middle of the screen wait until the player control equals yes, and then it's gonna hide itself. So now we're gonna to go to looks. We're gonna grab out hide and put it on the bottom. Now there's one other thing we should do is we should make this go to the middle of the screen. So you can put a line of code to make that happen or on the right side of the screen, you'll see that there's an X coordinate delete whatever that coordinate is and say zero because that's the middle of the screen and a Y coordinate, delete that and change that to zero. Okay, so now we've got our glitch protector in the middle of the screen and we should also probably make it so that when the game starts, the glitch protector is hidden. So we're gonna go to events, drag out when green flag clicked. And then we're gonna go to the purple category looks and we're gonna drag out hide. So we're gonna hit go on our game. And now when we click, the screen goes red, which means we can't see what's going on. 
but it works, right? Behind the scenes, everything is working. Now let's see if it prevents the glitch. So double click, one, two, it does. Okay, so it's doing its job. Now, we obviously don't want this red, big red block to appear, do we? So we, if we make it hidden, we will be able to click through it, which means that it's not going to work. Um, so for example, if I take out the show part of this code, it will not work. I can double I can double click and we still get the glitch. Even in full screen doesn't work. So we can't make it hidden. Now, something we've done in previous lessons is made uh seen the difference between hiding a sprite and giving the sprite a ghost effect of 100. Now, here's something interesting. Down you go little kitten. So now here's something interesting. So we're going to go to set color effect to zero. Drag that out and put that right, let's say, underneath when I receive glitch protector. So we've got when I receive glitch protector, set color effect to zero. Click on that white triangle next to where it says color and change that to ghost effect. Now, ghost effect makes something see-through, transparent. So we've done clever things before where we have gotten code to work with sprites that are invisible by setting their ghost effect to 100, meaning that they're completely see-through, they're completely invisible. However, they can still detect if they're touching each other, which is really useful. They still do collision, which when you hide doesn't work. Um, so I thought, easy, I'll just set the ghost effect to 100. The problem is, when we try this again, it still doesn't work. Setting the transparency to 100 means you can click through um, our glitch protector. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on that 100 and change it to 99. So it's basically invisible. But hopefully, double click, double click, and there we go. We fix the glitch. I'm double clicking here, double click, and the glitch is fixed. So as I said before, <laughs> this is a very weird solution to our glitch. But um, sometimes you see those. Sometimes you see games which have very odd solutions, especially if lots of people are working on the code. Uh, there'll be a, a weird bit of code that solves some kind of problem and someone will go, oh, I tried deleting this bit of code, but then the game stops working. So uh, I just have to leave it be. <laughs> and this is an odd little bit of code here. And the nice thing is, is that with, with the uh, transparency set to 99, I can't see any difference on the screen. Can you? Can you see a very slight red tinge on the screen? I can't. So that's pretty good. So if you can think of a better solution, I'd love to hear it. Um, and if you've ever used a really terrible, um, inelegant, clumsy hack to solve a problem, a hacky solution, um, sometimes in the, uh, these are called workarounds, like you have a problem and you can't solve the problem, so you have to work around the problem. That's what we're doing, using a workaround. If you've ever had an experience with having to create your own workaround, share it in the comments. Um, if you subscribe and ring the bell, do all that YouTube stuff, you'll see the next episode. Otherwise, stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.